Hello and welcome to another Red 9 demo. Um, it's been quite a while since the last one, um, mainly because I don't know whether you're aware, we've set Red 9 up as a consultancy business in its own right. So we spent an awful lot of time um, gearing up, doing new work for clients, um, doing facial systems, doing rigging systems, which is part of this, um, and generally setting the company up. We've also been busy with the ProPack. Um, ProPack is something that we've been keen to do for a while. Um, and basically the idea of that is that we take what we've got in here and we expand on it and we do tools that are a little bit more production oriented um, or geared more towards large, larger scale studios and also do tools like I'm about to show you. So this is kind of a teaser really as to what we're going to be doing, the sort of work that we're going to be doing um, and exposing to you guys. What I want to go through is the Anim Redirector. Um, this is something I've wanted to do for a long, long time, but it's only really recently that we've had enough um, enough data and enough tool sets and enough knowledge to do this. Uh, it's something that is hopefully going to prove very useful to most of you. This guy here, by the way, this is the Red9 rig. Uh, pretty standard biped rig, lots of cool stuff on it, soft IK, stretch, as you'd expect. Uh, it's just a general production rig. So what, we'll, what we've got here is we've got a piece of animation data, and the idea is I want to redirect it. So case in point, we've got a walk. Uh, the guy is stumbling around something now, but let's say somebody has come in and they've put a bloody great big table just where he's walking. Anyone who's done cutscenes uh, in games and environments, they'll know exactly what's happened. You know, someone's models come in, they've changed the level, they put that in the way. How do we get around that? Well, hand animating that and modifying this through layers is actually a real pain. This guy's a standard rig, so these are effectively world space because they're local to this object here. They're not in, it's not like a, a skeleton where you can literally just redirect the skeleton and there's one route. This is a multiple route object. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the rig to use the rig dev, the, the Red 9 meta rig. One of the decisions that we're kind of taking for the pro pack is that we'd rather have rigs wired up with meta. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to use our production rig. It'd be nice if you all did, but. Um, Meta gives us a lot more information about what the rig is, the structure of the rig, and just generally helps you if you're a TD, it will help you expand your tool sets because there is a huge amount of code behind Meta rig, um, lots of stuff exposed already for you. So I'm going to use this on. And what I want to do is when you open the tool, you'll see the time ranges are set. There's a lot of options in here, we'll be going through those later on in the demo, but I'm just going to do a, a base one first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set time ranges, and like everything else in Red9, if I were to do that, Let's say I want to redirect around there and set. Um, I can use that, and that's that becomes our time ranges. I'll ignore the phone. So there's the time range set. What I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a motion path. Now the object I use, the object I select when I'm doing this, um, that is the root point. So that becomes the pivot of the redirect. So if I let's say around that point, let's say the redirect is at that frame there. I'm going to go build the guides which builds me my motion path. You'll see there's the motion path, there's his current trajectory, that's currently where he's going. I've said to have 10 CVs on this, so there's 10 control points on it. And the object I selected, the frame I selected is cast down to the ground plane and that becomes the pivot. So that becomes a general pivot for this piece of data. Now we could just do that, that's nice and easy, we could just redirect him. But what happens if we're, we've got to get to this end point, we need to actually redirect the central piece of animation. Well this is our motion path. So if I go F8, come into, motion, into our CV mode, if I select B and hold it down, that becomes our soft mode. You can see it's selecting. Instantly, if you've got modeling, uh, sorry, the modeling toolkit on, you don't get that option. Um, I turn it off because I don't like it particularly. Well, not when I'm doing this stuff anyway. And I'm just going to move that around. I'm going to move that CV. So we're going to redirect them around that node there. But let's say we want to do a bit more than that. Let's say we're just going to move that. Maybe the start of him is in the wrong place. Maybe we've actually, you know, they've, they've changed where the door is and actually he's got to come in from over there. Um, that looks about right, so we'll just apply that. There it goes, it's calculating it. Okay, and there we go. So there's our character now redirecting around that point. He's now avoiding the, the, the new table and he's coming into the right place. Now one thing you'll notice is that there's a bit of a slippage here on his feet, just there. That is because this node here, this yellow um, triangle, that is the, the center point for the redirect. So that's effectively the pivot around which the redirect happens. And what we've done is we've allowed you to actually modify that. So if I were to, let's say if I push the data back to how it was, there's a blend to original here. Let's push that back there. And if I just apply that, that resets the data back to where it was. Or I can do undo if I wanted to. 
just to show what that does. Plenty of original, I think there it goes. Uh, so there's the original data back. Now, what I can do is I can select this thing here. Let's get back into that. Uh, I can select motion path and I can just readjust the pivot of where this thing actually is because I want it to be underneath him at all times. Now, uh, at some point we'll try and get it to do this for us automatically. For the time being, we've kind of given you the option of just setting this thing. Uh, that's pretty good around there. It's there, let's say. Now, obviously, that's great, except now that the data is cached, you can see the point cloud in front of him is now out of sync. So, what we have to do is hit this button, resync again in cloud, which just resamples the original animation data now against this reference point. Okay, so that's now that. And if we go back to the CVs that we had, ignore that cycle, that's just being, may have been an idiot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to redirect them around that point there. So, there we go. Which should get rid of the slippage. Okay, there we go. So he's now underneath that, and that's the pivot point. So he's going to properly redirect around there. So that's taken me, what, two minutes, and I've completely redirected the piece of animation, and we're back into the original shape there, back into the original frame. And we can still got the option of grabbing this and moving it around wherever we wanted to. So we've got the ghost if we wanted to. The other thing about this, which is really, really useful, is when I select these two wrists, for example, the wrists are currently in the main space. That means they're in the, the world space of this main control object. If I wanted this piece of animation, I, I decided that, well, it'd be easier if these arms were, were uh, parented to the chest during this. Now, the animation is going to pop because, obviously, the transforms are completely different. But the point cloud doesn't care. So if I readjust that and I reapply the point cloud, data is still going to be correct. But the world space is now going to be the chest on these controllers here. So I've, I've not only redirected them, I've rechanged the parent space of this guy at the same point. So really powerful, uh, redirecting, moving, modifying animation data around. And then I can delete the guys once I finish, so I delete that system. So that's that's the, the, the best use, that's the kind of the, uh, the advanced use, if you like. I said I was going to go through some of these, uh, a little bit like most of the rest of the Red9 systems. These will relate to where the path is and where the pivot point of that path is. As you saw when I did that, the pivot point was down here, so it's this this node here at that frame cast down to the world ground plane. The rotates are effectively um, a, a vector, which is the direction in which that's travelling. The path is cast down to the y plane as well, which is all nice and easy. But if you wanted to, I don't know, if you had a specific point and you wanted to keep it relative to this object, if we were to take these two off. Uh, I'm going to do a tiny time go time like time range on this because I don't want to keep it um, processing the data. In fact, what I'll do is we won't do that. We'll do the whole thing. So that's, and I'll use this option down here, the build raw. The build raw instantly builds the guides, builds the system, but doesn't actually take the data. It just builds you the raw data. Uh, so let's grab this guy and we'll go build raw. So you see, I've told it not to project it and not to project the rotates, which means the pivot is where the wrist was at that frame. If I do the same thing and I say path rotate y equals zero, it will basically guide build. Oops, excuse me. It'll build a guide, but it'll get build a guide relative to the object I've selected. So it'd be at that point now. Build guides raw. Oh, there we go. Um, and it's projected to y again. It, it's it's said basically it's projected, but it's at that initial height, so it's a flat curve. If I were to allow that to have up and down motion in it as well, we have this box option here. Allow path variant which will give me the full up-down motion of where this guy actually is. I'm not sure what's going on there. Oh, that's the end of the other path when we used it. Um, so you see there's lots of options to build that up. Um, and if you really want to, there's an option there for building handles. If you don't want to get into the CVs, this will build handles for you on the curves. You can pull them around as transforms if you really want to. And that's it, really. Um, but like I say, I mean, if you really want to get into quick stuff, one of the other things is, and just show you this very quickly, if you're not bothered about building, pack, building clouds, moving stuff around and all you want to do is physically just push him around very slightly by a general transform. You don't have to build a motion path. What you can do is you can just go build the guides, which will give you literally just a ghost clip. That's all it will give you. It will give you the front, the end, and the wire. The wire is just there so you can see where it's going. I can select that. It selects everything in the system and that becomes our center of the redirect and that's all it gives you if you take the motion path off. This guy, by the way, here, this is because we only baked out up to that point now. That's the end of the old power player coming up. Uh, and then we can do the other guy. So it leaves us a nice clean animation. So I hope that's given you a taster. Like I say, there's a lot of stuff coming up in the Pro Pack. 
along this ilk, um, things that we want to do just to push production a little harder uh, and give you guys a much better production line that you can use out of the box. Um, watch your space. Thank you very much for watching.